Gather around the table, fam. We're gonna be talking about the menu. I'm gonna let you know in a review so full of shitty restaurant and food puns, you're gonna wanna give this a one star rating. Let's begin. When a world-renowned top chef invites a group of people to his special exclusive island restaurant to try his new offerings, they can't pass that up. Even if the meal's on the spendier side, at around $2,000 a head, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Most people would die for such an opportunity. And maybe some of these people will too. <laughs> we have a mystery on our hands! Director Mark Malloyd's cooking up a mystery here. He put the burners on max, and he's allowed you to have a seat at the table to watch this all unfold. Yeah, we're back to the restaurant references again. And the chef preparing the meal is none other than Ray Fiennes, Voldemort himself. Yeah, he's once again playing kind of a, kind of a dick. But the man is passionate about his food, damn it, and he expects others to appreciate it. I wanna let you know this is gonna be spoiler free, so you don't need to worry, I'm not gonna give anything away. Because the mystery is the driving force of this film, a few people are brought to this island, they don't know what to expect outside of they're gonna be served some eccentric food. They have a five course meal being presented, but also on the table, their baggage, their emotional weight, and how they come to terms with it is something that's quite exciting. The main character here is a bit of a mystery. She goes by the name Margot and is played by Anya Taylor-Joy, the lovely, Always exciting Anya Taylor-Joy. Here's no different. She just, she just has something about her. She has that it factor, as they say. Nicholas Holt plays Tyler, a foodie, a super fan of the chef who can't wait to get to the island and start feasting. Other notable standouts to me were Janet McTeer as Lillian, a food critic that really has an eye for this thing. Loved her in this film. Then you have the pest himself, John Leguizamo, who's had this renaissance in the last few years. I love to see it. My boy Luigi's back and he's better than ever. And then out of complete left field is Judith Light. Who's the boss actress? I haven't seen her since Who's the Boss? While the chef is preparing the meals and starving for their attention, it's clear that these guests don't appreciate anything. They're either full of themselves or don't have an identity or a broken marriage or only care about money. There's clearly more going on at this restaurant than a fancy meal. And we're gonna find out as the movie progresses. That's as far as I'm gonna go with the storyline. I will just say, much like the courses, the movie looks great. We have food porn on full display here. Gorgeous close-ups of cheese getting grated, sauces being swirled onto plates, crustaceans being perfectly placed on top of sea-salted rocks. The music in the film really sets the mood. It makes for a nice meal. It's not overdone, it's not undercooked, it's baked just right. Now the menu is one of those meals that lives and dies by the dessert. You can get every single course correct, but if you're left with a bitter, tart aftertaste, the whole thing kind of loses some of its luster, some of its appeal. And that's unfortunately where the menu kind of left me. The prep work was impeccably done, the staff all did what they were supposed to do, the lighting, the mood, the attention to detail, it was all perfectly executed. But I was waiting for the menu to wow me at the end, and it just kind of felt flat. Which is a shame, because when you have a film that's all about exceeding expectations, kind of changing the course as it goes on, this one felt kind of basic. Like starting out at a five-star restaurant, only to wind up sitting at a TGI Fridays. This film to me had sprinkles of Midsommar, shavings of The Game, starring Michael Douglas, but the spices don't quite sink in. They don't mix. They don't blend appropriately, and I'd rather watch either of those two other movies over the menu. While I didn't want to send the meal back and I could easily eat there again, I can't say you need to rush out to this restaurant anytime soon, especially when you can probably order takeout in a couple months on a streaming service near you. Just so much, it's obnoxious. Like, I don't even know half the shit I'm saying anymore. I think we're at a good place to wrap it up. The menu's a fun film, it's engaging, it keeps you invested, but ultimately, not the greatest conclusion, and the whole thing's just kind of like, uh, eh, all right, well, I, I think I had better stuff in my head than what they presented on the screen, but it's still a nice little movie. And I think that you'll have a good time watching it. And if you don't see it, you'll be fine too. Let me know in the comments if you saw this movie already or if you're excited to go out. Like the video if you had a good time. Please think about subscribing if you haven't as I post tons of movie reviews every week. I would love to have more people seated at my table. So until then, check please. Th that means I'm done.
The menu was seasoned to perfection, yet the final product still came out half-baked. As I was grazing over the menu, I couldn't help but think, man, someone's watching something better, and I think I'll have what he's having. You still could eat something a little bit better. I think I've done enough of these. Oh my god. Click on some other stuff if you're still here, otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna leave.